Well, brain injury comes with significant disruptions of mood. Um, you don't attribute the mood problems you had at that time to the brain injury, but no, more sir. strictly to the hormonal changes. Mm -hmm. Why? Because, one, I have never been one to do drugs, like drugs, or any anything that has to do with a body or mind change. As soon as I came back to Nashville, <clears throat> the very first person I met of the medical field besides the nurse and the intake people was the neurologist that, that my primary care physician had referred us to to be my neurologist in, on site. And the first thing he did was he prescribed me with a antidepressant. And I, I asked him, and I remember asking him point blank, why do I need an antidepressant? He said, you've undergone a very traumatic incident, and it's very likely to be de depressing when you realize that you would not be able to do some of the things that you did before. Well, this antidepressant he put me on, I think, affected those already changing hormones within my physio physiological system. And... Uh, and they just fluctuated. Of course, the brain injury, to me, enhanced everything. It didn't cut it back, it enhanced it. So if I was one way before the injury, now take make it twofold, and that's the way I am now. So describe yourself emotionally before the injury. Excitable, independent, hard charger, on the go, always. Basically, a, a semi-type A personality. Describe yourself emotionally after the injury. Immediately after the injury, I was calm, collected. I had reverted back to, a, I'd say, a BC personality. Your personality was flatter? Yes, it was very... In the, in the early stages after injury, it was very monotone. My, my speech was monotone. I had a flat effect. Did that begin to change? Yes, it did. Tell me about going from the flatter personality back to where you are today. Well, some of that was introduced to me in the speech therapy portion of the, the therapy. She would give me words and to inflect and <clears throat> different situations where I would role model or we would role play and I would have to be either the good guy, the bad guy, the good cop, bad cop, something like that, whatever role we were playing. But it was usually in the field of, that I had experienced it in sales. I was a salesperson, she was a buyer. And I, of course I would try to close the deal. And as a salesperson before you got hurt you would have to be outgoing. Yes. Um, what does it take in terms of personality to be successful in sales? You have to be persistent. You have to be an outgoing, persistent person. What does that mean? Well, outgoing is you don't meet a stranger. So you go up, you shake your hand, you introduce yourself, and you find out or you ask them questions that pertain to them and or their business. Do you see yourself as promoting your business other, any other way besides direct communication? And then you just kind of take it back. You can't, you can't ask closed-ended questions as a salesperson. Has, you have to ask open-ended questions so that they can give you some feedback so that you'll know how to address that, where you want to lead that sell. How long had you been doing sales before at the radio station in Austin before you got hurt? Or in Texas? Uh, since August of 96. So is that about a year? Yes. Um, after you've gotten hurt, where is that in terms of being able to be outgoing? I don't really think that changed because even coming back and meeting that neurologist, it, <clears throat> my questioning him, to me that took some outgoing personality to question his choice of give, giving me an antidepressant.